The cryptocurrency world is jam-packed with fascinating, strange, and spicy stories. One of the most intriguing, touching, and even mysterious narratives in all of cryptocurrency history is that of the Ethereum blockchain origins. Ethereum was born with the goal of being a more advanced, open source, and functional version of the Bitcoin mainly through the use of these amazing, still developing smart contracts. Now, the currency that makes up the majority of the Ethereum network is ETH, the world's second biggest blockchain launched its long-awaited merge. Come on. Um, two. Come on now. Moving from the proof of work to proof of stake. Big change. The algorithm consensus changed and drastically reduced Ethereum's energy usage, making it more environmental friendly than Bitcoin. Now to understand the importance of the merge, it's important to understand why people use blockchains. One of the most important ideals of the technology is it has no central authority that can control it. Thanks to a process called proof of work, in which the blockchain is operated and safeguarded by miners who approve new and valid transaction by solving complex mathematics puzzles, which makes it really extremely hard for hackers or tamperers to game the system. Now, the energy required to solve these problems is enormous, and the miners are rewarded in the blockchain's currency for the effort. Now, studies estimate that Bitcoin mining uses more power globally than most other countries. Massive. The enormous energy use of proof of work, which again, is built into the design, has also caused widespread criticism from environmental groups, especially countries who are trying to reduce their emissions in the face of climate change. A proof of work also has design issues in terms of security and scalability. Some developers do argue. So while Ethereum's first developers started to build the network on the proof of work in 2014, they are already toying with the idea of eventually switching over to a new, untested system called Proof of Stake. Well, a merge is a very, very... I'll put it in simple words for our viewers. Previously, Bitcoin and Ethereum were using a consensus mechanism. What is the consensus mechanism? How to solve a problem all agree on that, solve the problem, put it into the block, right? First, they were using proof of work, which was a little complicated and very energy consuming. Now that was good when Bitcoin and Ethereum started because that not so many transactions. Now it became an issue because it's actually taking a lot of consumption, electricity consumption, computing power, too much of it. Why? Because so many people at the same time trying to solve a problem so that they get the rewards for creating the blocks. Now that was before. With the merge, now not Bitcoin, but Ethereum has now moved beautifully to a place where they say, listen guys, we don't need all these. We have what is known as proof of stake. They change that proof of stake means you stake your rewards, your coins, your the tokens that you have. And that's it. The people who stake more have a better opportunity of actually creating the solutions, creating blocks, and thereby solving the problem of multiple people. Many people now have become a select few. So from here, we've come right here. And that has actually solved a major problem, computing power and electricity usage. And that, I say, is a big win for the environment. So if you look at Ethereum blockchain, it's always been in proof of work. So proof of work is what? It's a consensus mechanism where a lot of mining miners actually compete with each other to mine a block. Now what happens is that suppose 100 miners are competing with each other. So that means 100 miners are consuming electricity at the same time. So but that is not so energy efficient that consumes a lot of energy electricity. There, are, there has been so many concerns regarding this. People have raised concerns regarding carbon footprint. Now we are moving to proof of stake. Proof of stake is what? Just one person who is mine, compiling the block, he will be consuming the electricity. So that is what we are moving. That is where that is what the merge is happening. Merge means what? Merging of two chains. Merging of beacon chain to the mainnet, Ethereum mainnet, which is there. So that is the merge which is happening with Ethereum, and we are moving from proof of work to proof of stake. 
Right. The beacon chain is the engine on which Ethereum works, basically. It is the POS, the proof of stake. However, the transformation of the main ledger to this engine has to be multi-step, well calibrated to the tons of value locked onto the Ethereum network at the moment. Now, the beacon chain first implemented staking in the Ethereum network. A deposit contract was deployed in October 2020, and thereafter, in December 2020, the beacon chain was launched parallel to the main chain, therefore using a common state of the mainnet ledger. But there was a problem of onboarding the existing nodes to the new system. The incentivization of the miners to validators would change things significantly, and the community had to adapt to this new system, or this would have resulted in a split. So basically, there were four upgrades which majorly happened in the Ethereum network. Uh, first was the bundling, uh, bundling upgrade. So what happened in the bundling upgrade is that people started moving towards proof of stake. And if you see, this is the first upgrade where the gas impact happened. Because if you see, the gas is a bigger concern for Ethereum network. Because gas fees were really high, it was going beyond $100 for a, for a single transaction. So this is the first time where the gas was impacted. And that is where the excitement got created. Now, second upgrade was basically London hard fork where uh, you know people were encouraged to move to proof of stake rather than proof of work so this is the time you know miners were becoming uh, validators i mean people who were still, who were earlier just mining were using their mining devices they were they were encouraged to become validators so like they used to stake like you know they started staking stake eaters instead of just uh, just mining a node so that is where the london hard fork you know came in now the third upgrade third is basically the altar upgrade Altair upgrade basically started penalizing people who are not moving to proof of stake. Who were already there in proof of work, they started penalizing these people because they want to penalize people who are not moving, who are not adapting to the new chain. They also want to penalize at the same time people who are malicious, who are doing some malicious work in the network. So these were two kind of people who got penalized. First is that people who are not adapting to the new chain, uh, who are not moving to proof of stake. And other is basically the people who are doing malicious actions in the new chain. Now the fourth is the Arrow Glacier upgrade. So Arrow Glacier upgrade, what happened is that people uh, like, you know, we have delayed this uh, bomb, uh, which was like uh, about to happen that, like, you know, traffic bomb. So we, this was delayed for, for some time. See, by involving the network's approach to consensus, the merge is going to reduce Ethereum's energy consumption and requirements by 99.95%, and that is significant. Ensuring that the network can now sustainably support the next generation of Web3 creators and developers. Web3 is the next big thing, guys. That's really going to be sacrosanct for them. Second, the Ethereum's updated crypto economic model reduces Ether issuance and provides stronger security guarantees for users and DeFi protocols. A third benefit is that Ethereum's upcoming merge would significantly impact the way DeFi protocols operate. There's going to be a shake there. Atop crypto's most popular decentralized finance chain. Now, according to a recent DAP radar report, this was found. The study showed that delays that could arise during the transition to a proof-of-stake consensus mechanism, also known as the merge, and the impact on the institutions will make fundamental changes to the Ethereum network, like improving sustainability and security, setting it up for further scalability, and making an attractive real yield on staking. Now, all these changes are going to make Ethereum more attractive to institutional investors.
A look at Ethereum's roadmap makes it clear that the community is building the network and its technology for the long term. The merge is a step in the right direction. With the merge on the horizon, we are exploring factors that ensure Ethereum's long-term growth. So we see the Ethereum merge is a huge event in the Web3 universe. It will have far-reaching effects on the rest of the crypto industry. We are here to witness a historic moment unveil itself in front of our eyes, the merge.